Hi guys, welcome back aboard good old Athena. Please excuse my wet face, we are in Ireland and it's a little bit damp outside. This week we'll do a quick stop at the Royal Cork Yacht Club, which was founded in 1720, making it maybe the oldest yacht club in the world. Then we'll slowly start making our way west to the amazing cruising grounds that are out there, but we are gonna have to be careful because there's some nasty weather that's gonna blow through. My name is Miss, this is my wife Ava. I've spent the last five years on a somewhat extensive refit of our 1987 Warrior 38 named Athena. That was a DIY fun-packed adventure complete with a very extensive osmosis treatment, building a new rudder using vacuum infusion, rebuilding the entire deck, gutting and subsequently rebuilding most of the interior, painting the top sides and a ton of other projects. The summer of 2021 we started cruising full-time, now we're finally ready to begin our adventure. Tomorrow we'll make the long and strenuous six mile journey down to the Cork Royal Yacht Club. Today we have something different planned, but it's still something that's very much related to Ireland. The liquid sunshine has momentarily stopped and we're gonna seize this opportunity to jump on some public transportation and go check out a distillery. It always feels a little bit terrifying to leave Athena somewhere new, but there's a gate on this marina, so we should be fairly safe. I love traveling by public transportation when I'm in new countries. While it's not glamorous, it takes us away from the shore, which is often heavily influenced by tourism and gives us a behind the scene glimpse of real life. This particular bus gets high marks for having a display that tells us the names of the upcoming stops. After about 90 minutes, we arrived in Middleton, a charming town which is known for the Jameson Distillery. Ava and I had signed up not only for a tour, but also for a whiskey tasting. The tour started with a short video about the history of whiskey in Ireland. We then went on to see the old buildings where they used to produce whiskey. Today the production happens in more modern facilities next door. The tour was educational and fun, well worth the price and the 90 minute bus ride. One of the highlights of the tour was tasting the difference between Irish, Scottish and American produced whiskey. Ava swore allegiance to the American whiskey, which turned out to be a Jack and Daniels number no. 7. After the tour followed the whiskey tasting. This was four different Irish whiskies. Also fun, but I can't help but feel that we may have gone into the deep end of the pool a little too soon. Ava and I are in no way whiskey experts, quite the opposite in fact. During the tasting, our guide described the flavor of one of the whiskies as blah 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 yada yada yada, chocolate wrapped apricots. I mean, uh, whoosh, we did not get that at all. If I had to go back to the distillery, I would still do the tour. That was a lot of fun, especially the part where we got to taste the differences between Irish, Scottish and American produced whiskies. That was fun. The tasting was just maybe a little bit too advanced for us. We did pick up some supplies for sundowners for when we get a little bit further south and the weather is nice and warm. For now we're just gonna store these carefully. Enough with the rampant alcoholism. Tomorrow we get back out on the water for a strenuous journey of six nautical miles. We are currently up here in Cork Harbour Marina. We're gonna go out into the channel and all the way down to the Royal Cork Yacht Club. Founded in 1720, making it, I believe, the oldest yacht club in the world.
We very much enjoyed our short stay at the Royal Cork Yacht Club. The club is steeped in history and well worth a stop, especially if you have kids aboard. If that's the case, then it is certainly the best marina in this area. There's a playground and also a little knot tying area here demonstrated by my lovely wife. The next morning, it was time for us to make the jump down to Kinsale. With a light pole on the stern line, I forced out our bow to get us around the motorboat in front of us. Outside of the marina, we wanted to unfurl the main, but the cover on our outhaul snapped. I know why this happened, and it is an easy fix, we just need to replace the line, but more about this later. As soon as we got out in open water, we unfurled our headsail. But without our main, it is going to be a slightly slower and also slightly bouncier trip. We arrived here in beautiful but very windy Kinsale yesterday evening. The ride here was probably the bumpiest ride we've had since we left Denmark, but I am excited to announce that there was no fish feeding. Meaning of course that there was no seasickness, which I am very excited about. I tried the trick with the earplug in the opposite ear of my dominant hand, meaning in my case my left ear. And uh, well, I don't know if that did the trick, but something worked and there was no seasickness. So the trip yesterday was from up here down to Kinsale. That's about 17 or 18 nautical miles. There were a few good reasons for us to come to Kinsale, if I can find it again here. For one, it is very well protected for any kind of weather. We're up here in what's called Castle Park Marina, I think. And well, as you can see, it's very well protected from swell and also from wind from basically any direction. In the beginning of this video, I mentioned some weather that was going to be blowing through and that weather is almost upon us. Ireland is here. We're down on the southwest coast and this swirly bit of nastiness out here is what we're trying to avoid. Right now it is forecasted to just go north of us by a little bit, but in case it decides to change its mind, it's best for us to be somewhere where we're going to be very safe. Kinsale is a great place for us to hide out in because for one, like I mentioned, it's very well protected, but also because there's the town over here, there's an old fort here, there's a beach somewhere here. So there are some things to occupy ourselves with. With the way the weather forecast is looking right now, we may very well end up being stranded here for another five days. And if that happens, well, then it's very nice to have all of these distractions around us. So we're not just sitting here inside of the boat twiddling our thumbs. Castle Park Marina is on the opposite side of the river from town, and that's where all the shops and stores are. Mads and I actually walked up there the other day. It was really nice, and we got this really delicious bread from a little outdoor market. And we're out of it and we need some more so i'm gonna go over there see if they're open i'm not sure i couldn't find anything online but i thought i'd take a walk over there and see if they're there Ooh, it's windy it's definitely a little windy today but at least it's not raining yet but the sun's out it's looking pretty nice and it's windy but I'll take the wind over rain any day. It's a two mile walk from the marina to the center of town, but it's nice because it's a paved path the entire way, but it's also a scenic walk and you get to see the marina and the river and different parts of town. Also, just a little FYI, I noticed that at night, this path is completely lit all the way to town. Don't know how important that information is. May just be relevant to me because I've been listening to a lot of true crime podcasts. They must have just recently cut these hedges back because on our last walk, you could not see this much view. Just another random rambling from my walk. I do not know how to dress here. The weather is so strange because when it's windy like this and the sun's out, it changes from second to second. So like if the sun's not out, you're cold because the wind is cold. But when the sun comes out, it's still windy, but it's hot. So you have to take off a layer. And then oddly enough, when it rains, the rain is warm. So I don't ever know what to wear. I just bring a bunch of clothes. Usually Manchester Springs has one jacket, but 
I mean, this backpack is just filled up with a change of jackets. That's where we're heading to next, across the bridge. This is the Bandon River. It actually stretches 40 miles into West Cork. And I read that it's a pretty popular fishing destination for salmon and sea trout. Just on the other side of the bridge, there's a bunch of food trucks. And we heard that the fish and chips truck is the best in all of Cork. So I think that's something Mads and I are definitely going to have to try out. Should have brought a hair tie. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> The tree of sacrifice. No, it's just a little random baby tree that I like. I also love these little baby ferns growing out of the wall. You know, sometimes Mad says, here, Ava, take the camera, go get some cool video. And then sometimes I come back with shots of baby ferns. Right behind me is Kinsale Yacht Club. They were too booked up when we called, so we couldn't find a spot here. So I'm sure it'd be nice and convenient being in the center of town, but we like Castle Park. It's remote and nice and quiet there. The town of Kinsale dates all the way back to medieval times and was actually a huge fishing port then. And you can kind of see the medieval influence in the architecture and the stone walls that surround the town. But today it's known as the gourmet capital of Ireland. And there are a ton of restaurants and bakeries and cafes and that's probably why we had such good bread while we're here. Sadly the market is not set up today it was in this little parking lot over here but that's okay I did see a little farmers market shop in the center of town so let's go check that out see what they have. Kinsale is also known for its population of artists and craftsmen so you can walk around town and pop into different shops and get handmade and local products which you guys know I'm a sucker for. This market was a great success. I got some Irish potatoes and spinach and green beans, and they actually grow some of their own produce. So that was pretty cool. I'm very glad I found them. I made it back to Athena without blowing away, luckily. And here are all my goodies from town. And as far as our magical market bread, I wasn't able to find it. I even went into a couple of shops and asked people if they knew of the stand from the market where they were from, but nobody knew. But someone did recommend to me trying this handmade sourdough potato bread that is sold at Spar. So. I'm looking forward to trying that. I just want to show you guys, I bought some specifically Irish spinach when we were at Aldi in Cork, and it was some of the biggest spinach leaves I've ever seen. And I didn't think they would get much bigger, but I bought spinach from the little market in town. And look at this bad boy. That is pretty much the size of my head. That is the biggest spinach leaf I've ever seen. While Ava was gallivanting around town, I got a lift from a very nice local farmer named Jerry. He lives just over on the other side of the hill here. He took me to Union Chantry, where they had this 10 millimeter Dyneema line that's perfect for a replacement for our outhaul. Our old outhaul is this light gray line that's attached to the clue of the sail. The outhaul is used to pull the sail out. It's important for sail trim and also just for, well, having a working mainsail. While we're replacing the outhaul, we also have the option of modifying our running rigging just a tiny bit so we can lead our topping lift back to the cockpit. Even though our old outhaul looks a little bit worse for wear, I still think we have enough left of this that we can use it for the bottom part of our topping lift. Right now our topping lift, which is also our second main halyard, terminates here at the base of the mast. And if we could just lead that aft to the cockpit, then we wouldn't have to come up here to tighten the topping lift. For this topping lift arrangement to work really well, we need a block up here. That's the way Athena was set up when I got her. We changed it this last winter in Gosport, but I actually like how it was set up before. So yeah, that, that's what we're going back to. Ta-da! Now, not only do we have our new outhaul, we also have our new topping lift. But like I mentioned, we do need a block and also a sheave for the end of the boom there before this is really gonna work. But that will be really nice. 
So what happened to our old outhaul? As you can see, the cover is torn. I think what happened is when Ava was first learning how to furl and unfurl the mainsail, she accidentally forgot to open the clutches for the furling line and that put a lot of strain on the outhaul and I think that's what damaged the cover. As you can see the cover here is basically melted into one solid piece so yeah no wonder it failed. We all make mistakes and that's what happens. Now if this had happened while we were on passage we could easily have jury rigged this but it's certainly better to replace the line and also the old outhaul was after we upgraded to the electric winch a little bit on the short side so we've fixed that with the new outhaul which is uh, well way 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 too long but that is an easier fix. And Maz just wanted to make something abundantly clear that it wasn't his precious winch that is to fault, it is his precious wife. Uh, something that I've learned since using the winch is that it is very powerful and I just need to be better at listening to the motor and seeing how much load is on the winch. Now we have a working out haul again and the weather seems like it's finally starting to play ball. So now there's nothing standing between us and getting back on the road. Well, I've got a little bit of a sore throat, but I'm sure it's nothing. Tomorrow we continue heading west. Our next port of call is gonna be Glandor, which is right here. We're in Kinsale right now, that's a 30 nautical mile trip. The winds for tomorrow are supposed to be light, but not unusable, so we shouldn't have to motor all of the way. I really like Kinsale. If you have to get stuck somewhere, it's probably one of the better places to do that. But I am also very excited to get back on the road because we only have another few weeks left here in Ireland and then we need to start keeping an eye out for a weather window to go back to France. I would have loved to stay here in Ireland all summer and do a full circumnavigation and just see everything. But Ava has a flight back to the US from Paris and when she gets back from that trip to see her family, well, it's gonna be the middle of August and by that point in time, we wanna start moving across the Bay of Biscay pretty soon just to have the best possible crossing. So from a strategic standpoint, it's better for us to be back in France when she gets back. I'm getting a little sidetracked here. What I'm trying to say is while we've enjoyed our stay here in Kinsale, we're also very excited to get back on the road to see some more of Ireland. So we hope we'll see you guys back here aboard Athena next week for some more exploration of Ireland. Yep. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. See you.